Blessed morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, yeah, as I was just saying uh, a minute ago, um, I just spent uh, half an hour reading that uh, report that came out uh, a couple of days ago with regard to that investigation with respect to Dr. Ravi Sakarai, which uh, uh, it's just devastating and it's really an eye-opener. However, um, it's especially heartbreaking for me because uh, uh, Dr. Sakaraya had been uh, uh, um, an unspoken mentor, uh, a teacher, uh, a preacher, a man of great respect for me, a man that I followed uh, closely throughout uh, at least the the last uh, 20 years, uh, listening to all his sermons, uh, reading his books, and uh, and even quoting his remarks and his notes uh, often in my, in my preaching. And yet the things that come out uh, from this uh, report are some things that uh, uh, leave you dumbfounded and heartbroken and truly uh, distressed. Uh, uh, however, we have to to confront uh, the realization that uh, um, this is nothing new. This is nothing strange. Uh, it is uh, not with ease that I can speak about this. But uh, uh, in, in Romans three two three, Paul tells us uh, specifically. For all have seen and fall short of the glory of God. In fact, on verses uh, uh, 10 to 12 of the same uh, chapter 3 of the book of Romans, uh, we read, as it is written, no one is righteous, not even one. No one understands, no one seeks God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. And this is the reality of man and sin. This is the reality of the life we live in a broken body, in a body of sin, in a body that is falling and that is going to continue to be falling throughout uh, uh, our whole life until the day of Christ. Our struggle is ascending and is continuous and is not going to stop. I myself uh, struggle with issues uh, Constantly, in fact, uh, as a matter of mercy, as a matter of grace, uh, the day I finally surrendered my life to Christ, uh, uh, God made a miracle, and practically all of the things uh, that, that that were apparently normal in my life and that uh, uh, ended up being extremely sinful. Some of them, some of them, complete debaucheries and activities that were. Uh, demoralizing and yet uh, God cleansed me of them in a in a powerful miraculous way taking away garbage that I never thought it would be possible yet not all of them because some of those things continue to harass me continue to push me continue to try to stick their head out and I continue to have to fight um uh, the fight of the faith against them is an is a, is an uphill battle in which uh, very often we end up uh, uh, facing uh, contention that seem impossible to break. Yet uh, God has given us the power; He has given us the tools; He has given us the resources to to be able to fight against them. Uh, uh, when 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 we read in uh, in chapter 7 of the book of Romans, what Paul tells us, uh, we may feel a bit depressed as a matter of fact. He says, uh, for I know, in chapter 7, verse 18, uh, for I know that nothing good dwells in me that is not in my flesh, for I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. And this is Paul. Uh, we don't know exactly what was the situation with Paul, which is uh, writing uh, this, but we know that obviously sin is looting in his life. And when we read the following verses, 
at verse 19 and 20, for I do not do the good I want to do. The evil I do not want is what keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells within me. And that's the whole point. That is exactly the point, that there is a sin looted in our life that is going to continue to, to try to come out. And let me tell you a thing, the worst part about it is how uh, uh, deceiving, how conniving, how tricky sin is, that often it comes into your head and, and many times even subconsciously you start doing something that you're not supposed to be doing and uh, and yet the holy spirit is there to warn you so that as you start doing whatever it is whether it is conscious or unconscious the holy spirit tell you hey watch out heads up and yet many times what we do instead of listening to that first warning is to shut the holy spirit because we want to continue to do what we are doing because we're getting some kind of pleasure from it. So we carry on pushing the, 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 the noise of the Spirit away, closing the door to it so our ears do not listen to the warning, our heart stop listening, and in that moment it become, it become a callous as we just let sin uh, uh, grow in us to a point that we end up uh, uh, falling, that we end up uh, uh, sinning and then once we're done with it and knowing that what we have done is completely bad in the eyes of God we come to repentance Lord forgive me I did it again I fell again forgive me I'm sorry but you had the warning you had the forewarning and you didn't listen I am telling you this because uh, I live it and it's a reality of how we need to be completely, constantly uh, uh, alert to shut the door to sin before it uh, take uh, any shape or form in our hearts. Because believe me, you have like microseconds before it grows into a point in which you cannot stop it. And, and yet God gives us the tools. God gives us uh, the, the, the resources for us to break away from it. And uh, uh, like he says, for example, uh, we have a case in chapter 12 of the second Corinthian in which Paul speaks to us about uh, uh, a thorn in the flesh, which we don't know exactly what it was that, that was causing uh, this turn and, and Paul does not speak about it as, uh, with a specificity. In fact, uh, most theologians argue in many different ways that it could have been uh, uh, an illness. Many says it was his eyes. Others say that it was a, a syncope. That the, others say that it was uh, 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 migraines. Uh, but uh, many others say it was a sin that was looted in his life, that he needed to keep pushing away. Others, uh, uh, in fact, speak of his enemies, etc. But one thing we know for sure is that in chapter 7 he's telling us that he was struggling with something that he needed to continue to, 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 to contend with. So when we read here, in, in verse 7 of 2 Corinthians 12, so to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelation, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. And when we speak of a messenger of Satan, right away, I, for some reason, I think of, I, I think of sin because... Uh, this is how Satan works. He, 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 and the beauty of it is that God allows it to keep you, not only to keep you alert, but to let you know that you have no strength to fight. That you need to depend on him. That you need to be completely 
uh, 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 subject to him, allowed him to be the one who who built you up, to guide you through through the fight, to 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 to, to continue to to keep you <laughs> out of your own mess. And that's the whole point. Here in verse 8 it tells, Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that is, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient to you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ my rest upon me. And this is the whole point. If we recognize our incapacity to fight against, against sin, if we recognize our incapacity to struggle with sin, if we, if we realize our weaknesses and understand that Satan is always on the attack and realize that in any given moment, anything that... that <coughs> that is a weakness in us, can come back to haunt us, then we are going to be on the alert. And then God's power is going to redeem us of that specific situation. Here on verse 10 it says, For the sake of Christ then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecution, and calamities, for when I'm weak, then I am strong and this is the whole point we are weak only God makes us strong we can't fight only God can fight for us we just need to let him what happened to Dr. Zachariah is disgraceful it's uh, tasteless and it's heartbreaking yet uh, none of us are exempt from it any of us can fall in that trap. So keep yourself alert. Watch and pray, like Jesus says, said to his disciples, that you do not fall into temptation. And when temptation comes, understand that you just have microseconds to cry out to God. Literally cry out to God. Run to him to keep you from falling. Because that is the only way. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you for listening.